Hello, everyone. My name is Joan Hua. I am with AVP. It's a data and digital asset management consultancy located in the United States. I'm here today to talk about a report we did with FAGI in the United States on software accessibility for open source digital preservation applications. We want to make digital preservation open source desktop applications more accessible. Now, how do we do that? Uh, to work on this, FAGI engaged AVP and launched a project, and we provided um, accessibility evaluations of select tools, and we wanted also to make broad recommendations that can be applicable to additional digital preservation tools and scenarios. AVP worked with Kate Murray on selecting the applications. We already knew that we wanted to follow through on the recommendations for an active, well-used application, so AVP and FADGI chose to evaluate uh, Embark, and then two other applications were selected for evaluation. Those were BWF MetaEdit and Handbrake. Then AVP worked with Kate to develop the UX scenarios and um, that represent most common use cases for these applications. Uh, AVP brought in Tech for All, which is a, another consultancy focusing on accessibility, and they uh, use the UX narrative as the basis for their accessibility testing, and they created detailed reports that compiled issues. Um, the evalu evaluation was done in accordance with WCAG 2.1, and as many of you may know, uh, it stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, or WCAG, some of you may call that. Um, they offer a set of success criteria that digital tools can follow and be measured against. And the guidelines are created primarily for web content, but um, they can be applicable or useful for looking at um, mobile applications and desktop applications also. Uh, AVP then prepared a recommendation report based on the findings uh, from the testing. And in the report, we discussed more broader themes surfaced through the accessibility evaluations and provided generalizable guidelines that can be applied to improving accessibility of open source applications that support digital <laughs> preservation efforts. Um, that is a general outcome of the project. The other outcome is more specific, and that is to implement changes to improve Embark, making it more accessible. And I'll summarize some of the results from the analysis. Uh, they're not maybe not too surprising. Uh, I'll give you the spoiler right away. All three applications exhibited serious usage barriers for people who are blind or have mobility impairment, and none of them conform to the standards overall. Some cases were so severe that applications were rendered unusable. All of them were difficult to use in, uh, in general, and I'll note that Embark has many essential functions that were completely inaccessible uh, due to a number of uh, severe issues, and uh, that's inaccessible, that makes it inaccessible to users who are blind or have mobility impairment. Uh, BWF Meta Edit was pretty similar, and Handbrake sounds a little less extreme, but it's considered difficult to use still. And now let's dig a bit deeper into the issues and their violations of WCAG 2.1 success criteria. Um, these are the subcategory of issues that are sort of pointing to attention spots that are more problematic. And for example, you can see a concentration of issues related to um, a criteria 3.3.2 labels or instructions. Um, Embark has six issues associated with it, and Handbrake has nine issues associated with it. And let's keep in mind that the testing was done by following user journeys in the different versions of the three applications of Windows and Macs uh, using screen readers and keyboard navigation. It was not done by uh, going through the WCAG success criteria as a checklist. Um, and so that's why I don't want to focus too much on the conformance um, because it's also important to look at the results based on the issues defined. If we just compare the issues across the three tools, we see that Embark has the greatest number of critical issues. And then on the other hand, Handbrake has no critical issues, but uh, a number of high severity issues. In terms of global issues, um, 
and BARC also exhibits the greatest number of global issues. Those are um, issues that come with a certain component, such as a data table or a pop-up dialog window. And so that means if there's an issue making a table not uh, accessible, then that's going to be prevalent throughout the application, regardless of what you use it for or uh, the paths you take in the application. And they also indicate problem spots to prioritize these global issues do uh, because of the high visibility and the the wide impact it might have when you uh, fixing the issues properly. And I'll give you two examples of the global issues in Embark. One was the keyboard focus, um, almost non-existent in Embark. And keyboard focus are those uh, visual cues that uh, indicate when the, the input is moving, when you tab on the keyboard on the screen. And sometimes it's like a color change or uh, outline on, around the button. And then the other example is the tables cannot be navigated using a keyboard and the columns cannot be sorted using a keyboard. And, and that's important when you're relying on screen reader or, or you can't use the mouse or you don't want to use the mouse. Uh, furthermore, the screen reader does not tell you which row or table or which row on a table is being selected or deselected. Um, it's important to keep in mind that the issue count, which I'm showing here, only tells one story. The good news is that fixing uh, something like a like a component can maybe address multiple issues, and that's why we wanted to look for some themes and compile the recommendations. Based on the results and the themes identified, AVP provided some recommended guidelines to consider for and for generally for open source uh, GUI based desktop applications, especially those that are widely used in the digital preservation community. And here I'll present a very quick simplified summary. The report gives you more detail. Uh, the first one is what I already mentioned. Applications must create logical tab order or focus order so that the keyboard user can properly move around the application and complete tasks. And two, when a type of input, for example, a button, is represented only visually by a symbol or an image, an icon, um, explicitly add labels or instructions that can be accessible to screen readers. And third, color contrast affects readability, as many of you might know, um, but we also saw issues with dynamic changes that are not perceivable, as I mentioned, and because of the lack of color contrast or other indicators. So using a color alone, it's also worth thinking about that to, using colors alone to convey meaning um, is often confusing. Uh, it's usually better to combine colors with textures, textual labels, or icons. And the evaluation on Embark Handbrake and BWF MetaEdit pointed to issues related to static text not being accessible by screen readers. So meaning the screen reader doesn't announce uh, the text or it's announced inaccurately. And to address this, um, one way is it's a recommended practice to programmatically code the roles of interactive elements and make explicit relationships between the elements. So that's, for example, the simple, simply uh, don't use div or span tags for things that are that have a role like a button. Um, and then there's the, the, the idea is that you want to allow assistive technology to access the interface and, and announce things accurately. Um, the report provides a bit more detail, especially thinking about this for desktop application and WCAG also provides more resources on techniques to meet the success criteria. And finally, consider digital preservation use cases and how the accessibility of the application can support that. Um, a few things I'll point out here. I think out of the, exam the, the example of applications we looked at, there are a lot of usage of pop-out windows, and that's a, that's a common in digital preservation desktop applications. And those sometimes cause issues, uh, especially when the windows are not announced by screen reader or um, the keyboard can be trapped in a window and don't have a way to, to escape. And then uh, a lot of these tools also use a lot of uh, tables or data in grid form. And uh, when that is inaccessible, that, that, that uh, is a critical part of the application. And so 
it's important to make sure those are can be navigated tables can be navigated using a keyboard um, and you can sort and you can go back to the rows you were on uh, previously. Um, and then another thing to think about is desktop applications also uh, used for digital preservation tasks often have a component of accessing the local environment. Um, and then uh, maybe perhaps in, in the case where the control may be handed over to the local machine, it's best to limit the custom interfaces and then make judicious design decisions to prioritize usability in the complex interactions. So far, much of the presentation, I, I focused on what the issues detected were and how to address them going forward. Um, I suggest we always also consider the big picture for creating accessible, accessible applications, focusing on usability. And here are some high level uh, recommendations that I created, but the message here in general is rather than focusing only on the guidelines and specifications and only on how to fix the violations, it's more valuable to consider how the products will be used and then uh, make sure the use usability is good. And now uh, let's think about what we just heard. You might uh, be thinking, it sounds really bad. Uh, there are a lot of issues and these tools are not accessible, but really it's maybe not too surprising. Um, if the tool was not designed and developed with accessibility in mind, it often is not accessible. And that is the case for Embark. It wasn't uh, designed or developed with accessibility as a, as a primary goal or as a goal. And so the thing we want to do now is to fix it. And we do have the work in place and the work in progress so far that shows how, how important it is. Uh, and the good news is that many of the issues can be addressed. And there is a project plan already underway uh, to work on them to, to improve these tools. Um, this work is led by the Library of Congress in the United States and will hopefully serve as a useful foundation to help more in the community to think about and approach digital accessibility. And kind of to uh, emphasize the sentiment expressed earlier, I want to end with this quote, accessibility goals are also usability goals. Good accessibility is good usability. So what's happening next? Um, one of the goals, as I mentioned, of this project is to give input to the Embark development team to update Embark and improve its accessibility. So we'll give the eva evaluations to our colleagues uh, working on Embark, who has uh, contract funding to work on this in the next year or two. And the report should also be available uh, to share, and you can view that. And um, Kate will tell you more about that next. And so I'll hand it over to Kate. Thank you. If you have questions, you can contact me and my email address is shown on the slide here. Uh, so Joan's Hello not with everyone, my name is Joan Hua. I am with AVP, so it's good. a we data and- again. Um, So thank you, Joan. So now you will watch me struggle while I try to bring out my PowerPoint and we'll see how that goes. Uh, can someone who speaks Czech help me get to presenter view? So I'll start talking while that's coming up. So um, I'm Kate Murray from the Library of Congress and FAGI, and I'm just going to be following up on Joan's reports um, with a little bit of background about the project and some of our next steps. Um, in the last session of the whole conference, I'll tell you what FAGI is, right? So, um, <laughs> so FAGI stands for um, the U.S. Federal Agencies Digital Guidelines Initiative. We are 20 institutional members, all U.S. federal agencies, and mostly from the cultural heritage community. So the Library of Congress, the National Archives and Records Administration, the Smithsonian, we have some Smithsonian pals here today, National Library of Medicine, um, are typical participants, but also more technical and scientific agencies like NOAA and NASA, and even the FBI came to our last meeting, which is very exciting. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm allowed to tell you that, but they came. Um, so FAGI is led by the Library of Congress, um, uh, but it's cooperative and a very collaborative group. Um, while FAGI uh, and all FAGI guidelines um, uh, are, uh, I'm skipping ahead here, um, uh, all, all of our FAGI products have defined Creative Commons licenses and are always available free of charge. So last year at No Time to Wait, 
Um, Charles Wholesale and I talked about some other accessibility projects that FADGI had been working on, including a survey of accessibility implementations and a collection of definitions. But I'm here today to talk about researching accessibility in open source digital preservation applications. As you, as you heard from Joan, FADGI is partnering with AVP, and that's Chris Lasinic and Joan Hua, to explore building out accessibility services to support GUI applications for users with visual impairment using Embark as a proof of concept. I'll talk more about Embark in a moment, but in summary, Embark stands for uh, Metadata Embedded for Archival Content, and it's a free and open source application that um, enables users to audit metadata in DPX files as either individual files or a whole sequence, as well as um, RDB compliant MXF files. Um, and in 2022, we added support for FFP1 and MXF. So this project with Joan and AVP has a number of components, including a literature review, an analysis of GUI software applications, um, it, with uh, uh, accessibility needs for visual impairment, and these include but are not limited to alternate text for images, responsive text size, color contrast, defined code structure for adaptive technology, multimodal cues for encoding structures, navigation, including scrolling tables, and clear, in, immer, clear error messages. Um, we have a blog post on the signal that you can read for a little bit more information. Um, we have published our final report uh, on the FADGI site. I haven't really made any announcement about it yet, so this is the announcement about that. Um, and we'll probably do another blog post about it. Um, so, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background about some of the things in the report uh, and the project overall. So why did we choose um, these specific applications to test? So our first uh, criteria was, was that the applications be open source, free, with a GUI, although we did test some CLIs, in active development and used with uh, and widely used based on download statistics. So to varying degrees, FADGI provides some support for both Embark and VWF MetaEdit. Of course, lots of other folks support VWF MetaEdit as well. So we reached out to the development teams of both projects to check in with them, and everybody was on board. And for both of these projects, FADGI has active development contracts which can be used to make the accessibility improvements. For Handbrake, we wanted to test something well known and open source on the video side. We honestly don't have a connection at Handbrake, but we'd be happy to pass along the detailed report if anyone wanted to provide some contact information. Um, the criteria, as Joan mentioned, was based on WCAG, which stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and it's maintained and developed by W3C. And our work used the WCAG 2.1 standard. Uh, WCAG 2.2 was recently released, and there's also a WCAG 3 that's in draft form. So let's define some terms here. The first is the level of severity of impact on users. So critical means it's pretty much a deal breaker. The application component is basically unusable. And then we go down to high, which is somewhat unusable, but still somewhat usable, but still challenging. And then medium and low in decreasing areas of difficulty. Each of these communities of users has specific and sometimes overlapping needs. So for Embark, the focus is really on the visual aspects for people who are blind or with low vision. There are some impacts with people with mobility impairments in terms of navigation and clarity. Because Embark doesn't have any auditory or sound components, there's no impact there. But an interesting one for me was for folks with cognitive accessibility needs. We didn't get any feedback on this specifically, but it's likely rolled into some of the other suggestions, which will result in a better layout option and higher predictability. So Joan mentioned that Embark has a number of issues identified in the evaluation, and honestly, I'm not surprised. Right. To be candid, we did not have accessibility in mind, so it was not a driver in our design at all. But now we are aware, and now we will be aware as we move forward, and we're making the changes now. So I think that there's no shame in correcting course, and we'll take these lessons into the future. And we hope that other free open source projects will do the same, which is why we're sharing our journey. So let's take a look at some of these critical issues as an example. <coughs> so the data tables, which are a common feature in many digital preservation applications, the issue is that the tables can't be navigated or sorted using a keyboard or screen reader, and that's defined in the parts of the WCAG, which is there from the, defined in the second column on the right, specifically about keyboard and focus order and focus, visible focus. And the recommendation here is to ensure that tables and grids are navigable and sort, sortable using a keyboard. Users should be able to traverse the tables in two dimensions and get header information when traversing between columns. And this is a global problem in the Embark application, meaning that all of these issues occur on either all the screens in the ap application or occur within all of the components with this type. This also means that if we fixed it in one place in the app, we can roll that change over to all of the places in the app that use data tables. Here's another, another example of a high level issue, meaning that it's difficult but not impossible to use this feature. 
This one is focused on color contrast with a recommendation to make it at least a 4.5 to 1 ratio for text in a colored box. So uh, to, com that and to comply with a, a specific part of WCAG. The number 4.5 in the ratio refers to the relative luminance of the lighter color, and the one refers to the relative luminance of the darker color. In plain English, this means that there needs to be a better contrast or distinction between this background color over which the text is rendered. For both, in, both Embark and BWF Meta Edit, the specific accessibility issues were identified, that were identified will be tracked in their responsive GitHub issue trackers. Here's the one for Embark, which was recently added, and the Embark team, which is Burt Lyons, Dan Fisher, and Caroline Shea, are working on these tasks already, and the community will be able to follow along with the progress on the GitHub. The issues for BWF Meta Edit will be tracked in the same way. So before I wrap up, I just want to give a shout out to a project that Charles Hosale is leading for FAGI, which is to develop a high-level embedded metadata template for WebVTT files, which are used for captions and subtitles. Um, this project was inspired by some FAGI guidelines for embedding metadata in DPX and BWF. Uh, the various members expressed a practical need for including data in WebVTTs uh, because sometimes it can be hard to maintain the connection between the WebVTT and the media file. Uh, we're pretty far along uh, with this project. I think Charles had a meeting uh, this week when I wasn't there. Um, uh, but we'll share the product with the community, and if there's general agreement about the value, we'll approach W3C about adding it to the standard itself. Uh, in addition to the WebVTT work, we have a few other projects related to accessibility. The first is a new Library of Congress LCR, or Library of Congress Regulation, which was just published on October 1st for digital accessibility standards that sets standards for digital accessibility across the library and establishes responsibility for ensuring compliance with these standards and explains procedures for establishing exemptions to the standards. Um, uh, this certainly, this software project that Badgie's working on uh, directly supports this work. Another effort is the new accessibility content category on the sustainability of digital formats website, which brings together our recent descriptions of formats that support accessibility, such as those for captions, time codes, subtitles, screen readers, and more. Um, as an aside, uh, on the format site, we are so pleased to have a contract for format descriptions, which we call FDDs. Uh, research and writing this year with Myriad Consulting, um, especially Ashley Bluer, who is very well known to this community. And we've published a work plan on what formats are planned coming up uh, for research in the coming months. So uh, just want to uh, show my appreciation to all the folks who worked in this project, our partners at AVP and the analysts at Tech for All, uh, and also the application developers at both Embark and BWF MetaEdit, Meta who graciously accepted the review and approached the requested changes with open hearts and minds. The overall mindset was that we want the applications to be available and usable to all. And of course, FAGI members, uh, there are some in the audience again, um, as well as those in person, um, and all of our friends at FAGI. Um, so that's it for us. Uh, if we have time for questions, you feel free to uh, talk to me now or um, always reach out to me through the FAGI site. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there any questions over someone from our audience online? I wonder if people in this community are really using Handbrake. A couple of people in the back row. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we, we just wanted to think about uh, another, uh, we had to search around a little bit for a, another application to test so that we had a bit of a broader pool so it wasn't just badgy supported applications. Anyone? Another question? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.